Bin Weevils was one of the most popular child-friendly MMOs in the late 2000s and early 2010s. But so much about the game has been forgotten or straight up undiscovered by 99% of players. So that's why we're here today, from a TV show and smoothie collaboration to discontinued characters and the eventual downfall of the company. Strap in, because this is going to be a roller coaster of nostalgia. I'm sure most of you know how iceberg videos work by now, but if this is your first, let me quickly explain. An iceberg breaks down facts and secrets from a franchise, sorts them from most well-known, the tip of the iceberg, to the deepest, darkest secrets that the majority of players had no idea about. Throughout this video, we will go deeper and deeper, so be sure to let me know in the comments at what point you started learning new things. Now with that out of the way, let's start this deep dive. Tell you about Where better to start this iceberg than at the launch of the game? Bin Weevils was originally developed by Bin Weevils Limited as a collaborative effort between Nickelodeon UK, Prism Entertainment, and CEG in 2004. Originally, the project consisted of short animated clips to air on Nickelodeon in between shows in 2006. But one year later, Bin Weevils relaunched independently, which began the Bin Weevils we all know and grew up with. This was partially due to the growing success of other kid MMOs, such as Club Penguin that had just hit 3 million players at this time. The initial look of the binscape was much more basic than what many of us are probably used to, with the design being heavily 2D. But this was only just the beginning. A lot of people's clearest memories about Bin Weevils are the collaborations with various brands, including Innocence Movies, Froobs, the Honey Monster, who terrified me as a kid, and Tatty Ted. These partnerships included in-game parties, crosswords, and collectibles around the bin, as well as exclusive codes that could only be found on the physical products in supermarkets, which gave unique items, mulch, and XP. In the innocent event, there was even a competition to become a big weevil, who was slightly larger than all the other players in the game. However, I sadly cannot find record for who the winner of this was. This makes me want an innocence movie. Possibly the most secret location in the game, Fum's Beanstalk and Fum's Tower are only accessible through growing and watering a rare seed for five real-life days. This can occasionally be bought in the garden shop. Fum's Beanstalk's primary purpose in the game is for the SWS, or Secret Weevil Surface. In the mission, Jack and the Beanstalk, players have to solve puzzles and sneak past the sleeping giant Fum, whose name is a clever play on fee fi fo fum from the original Jack and the Beanstalk, which I like. In this tower, you will eventually find treasure and take home the giant's golden goose, which can then be placed back in your own nest. Fum's Beanstalk is also the highest location on the map and made for a great secret hangout spot for you and your friends when the server was super busy. As you can see, I don't have any friends. Much like Club Penguin and Moshi Monsters, Bin Weevils had a humongous merchandise empire consisting of literally anything you can think of. I'll give you five seconds to think of anything a kid's game could possibly release into stores. Okay, let's see if it's there. Action figures, play sets, plush toys, card games, stickers, handbooks, video games, backpacks, blind bags, activity books, annuals, magazines, top trumps, reward charts, board games, bedding, posters. <gasps> And that's just on the first page after searching. And honestly, a lot of this stuff is pretty well made to give credit. I have some figures here to give you a better idea of what they look like. They're not at all flimsy, and some of the plush toys even talk. In fact, if you want to see a Bin Weevil's mystery box with hundreds of dollars worth of stuff in, like this video now, and when we hit 100 likes, I will get one for a video. Some of this stuff is insane. Now we started this section with the launch, so it's only fitting that we end it with the shutdown of Bin Weevils and everything associated. Unlike other games running on Flash, Bin Weevils, or 55 Pixels, the new name of Bin Weevils Limited, never gave a statement about the game's fate after Adobe stopped their Flash player support. In fact, the game didn't even close down on December 31st like most others, but instead on January the 16th, 2021 when it literally couldn't run anymore. In the following days after, the domain name for binweevils.com just stopped working, and even the mobile spin-off Weevil World 
stopped working and was removed from the App Store. Almost every sign up in Weevils had been scrubbed from the internet and their social media accounts have been inactive since this time too. Despite no official statement from the team, there are several sources online stating that Bin Weevils have been stripped down to a skeleton crew of less than 10 people, which explains why there was such a lack of significant updates to the game in its later years. Things closed down so fast, in fact, that over a year later, I'm still being charged monthly for my membership. What is this? I am outraged! Yeah. We love Bin Weevils. Look. That's how much we love it. Love it. I love it so much, I put a hat on it. And then love it. it. <laughs> and I lick it. From 2007 to 2010, Bin Weevils created a monthly competition known as King of the Bin. The Weevil that had the highest scores on various games such as Weevil Wheels, Connect Mulch, Tinks Blocks and more would each get a unique crown to wear, a rug and a wallpaper, as well as being known as the king of the bin. On top of the in-game prizes, players could also win iPods and other real-life awards too. The most notable king of the bin was a player known as Bandit, who won this competition 10 times. That's a lot of crowns. As I briefly mentioned earlier, Bin Weevils at first launch had short two minute episodes air on Nickelodeon in order to promote the game to kids. Multiple episodes were aired and can be watched on various platforms such as YouTube, Vimeo and even the Nick UK website, with each episode having Tinkin' Clot interacting with one other Weevil and causing utter mayhem. However, when Bin Weevils went independent, that wasn't the end for the Nickelodeon relationship. According to a blog post in 2010, four years after their initial relationship ended, Bin Weevil struck up deals with Nick and Cartoon Network to introduce streaming on demand. This meant members, also known as Bin Tycoons, in-game could visit the movieplex inside of Bin Weevils and watch over 200 hours of cartoons, including SpongeBob SquarePants and Ben 10. This was done in order to promote the subscription service, which Bin Weevils had only recently implemented, but it's unclear how well this technique worked out. What is Weevil World? That question, unfortunately, is more difficult to answer than you'd expect. Weevil World is not a game. It's actually two games. Back in 2014, Weevil World, a spin-off to Bim Weevils, started being promoted on both YouTube and Twitter. This appeared to be a top-down farming idle style of game, similar to Varmville and Simpsons Tapped Out. But the part that gets confusing is that the game we're looking at isn't Weevil World. Well, it was, but it's not. Does that make sense? The game being promoted as Weevil World in 2014 to 2016 was actually later renamed to Cratercraft and again renamed to Farmcraft at a later date. The Weevil World a lot of us think of when we hear the name is this. A side-scroller 2D mobile version of Bin Weevils where you played mini-games and met other players. This was all in an attempt to bring a portion of the player base to the mobile genre, which had been blowing up for a few years at this point. Unfortunately, Weevil World wasn't received as well as would have been hoped. Many players felt that the design was outdated and unappealing, as well as being confused, since Weevil World that had been promoted for the past three years was totally different. When Bin Weevil shut down, Weevil World closed its doors too. Now before we move on, I'd like to share something I found during this segment. When going to the original Weaver World Twitter, the final tweet refers to a new Twitter, Cratercraft. But this page is totally empty, with the bio only linking one other account, Bin Weevils Rewritten. So it could be assumed that the original Weaver World and Cratercraft social media manager also runs the Bin Weevils Rewritten page. I just found that interesting. No need to kill. 2012 saw the launch of the Bin Weevils magazine that ran monthly for 38 issues up until 2015, initially being published by Egmont from 2012 to 2014, later being taken over by Kennedy Publishing up until 2015. If you've seen the Moshi Monster Iceberg, this might sound familiar, as in 2015 Egmont took over the publication of the Moshi Monster magazine after leaving the Bin Weevils team. These magazines consisted of upcoming events, stories, comics, puzzles, in-game secrets and mystery codes for in-game items. Each issue cost $2.99 in the UK and Northern Ireland, and even included some free gifts like stickers, posters and trading cards. The primary mascots for the first 22 issues were Monty, Glam and Mud, but these were switched to Scribbles alongside the Nest and Garden Inspectors due to legal issues which we'll be covering further down the iceberg. 
Also, if you go to the Bim Weevils magazine website now, it's a Chinese movie sharing website. I get more and more confused with every step. The official Bim Weevils album, Bim Tunes, came out on July the 26th, 2013, holding 12 songs, including Christmas Every Day, Bim Pets Bop, Whiz Pop Wallop Fizz, and the Big Bin Weevil Ball. Four of the songs on this album were actually written by fans. Splosh the Dosh was by Pinky136, I've Got the Scoop was by Eri Berry, Girls Rule by Yazoo100, and Let's Go by Vanilla Coke. The album was by Sony Music Entertainment, and you're hearing it as we transition to each layer of the iceberg. So get inside and enjoy the ride. Gam is the oldest character in the Bin Weevils franchise, and he held many tales of a canonical war before the launch of Bin Weevils called the Great Bin War, similar to the Time War from Doctor Who. Gam and Mem are two of the only Weevils known to have fought together in this war against the spiders, which led to them founding the SWS in order to protect the Bin from threats in the future. The next big one being Webb. Colin, Gam's pet dragon, has been said to have been rescued during this war too, however his brother Rupert was not. There is very little online about the Great Bin War, as most of these details are in old blog posts and magazines, specifically issue 23. If I come across any more information, I will be sure to make another video. If you know anything, please let me know in the comments, especially if you have issue 23. I can't find it anywhere. Bin Weevils had one major video game release on PC, and that was Bin Weevils RT Arcade. Launching at the end of 2014, RT Arcade is a paint-based piece of art software available on Steam where you can create anything you like and print it out. I personally have never played the game, but I do have a friend that did play the game, so he's going to explain the details for me now. So, Bin Weevil's RT Arcade is one of those special kinds of fucking awful that comes along every now and then. Like, first we had that fucking J Station loser, then we moved on to the Dream SMP, and now we have stuff like the Papoli YouTube channel and RT Arcade spewing utter shit onto our monitor screens, literally. But anyway, back on topic. This game essentially mimics the characteristics of an eggplant in the Aldi Veg section. Surprisingly large, very out of date, and quite frankly, useless to society. The game itself features an enhanced UI that looks like something you'd find on a £3.70 DSi game. But getting into the designing tools themselves, whilst I'm not an expert at Photoshop, I do pride myself on knowing my way around one of the most complex photo editing softwares ever made. RT Arcade, on the other hand, is supposed to be for children and thus easy to understand. However, it made me feel like I was having a stroke half the time I was using it. So you're probably thinking, well, the performance must at least be good if it's a much lighter tool than Photoshop. Well, my foolish friend, think again. While I don't have the most powerful computer on Earth, it can pretty much run any software I throw at it, providing I'm not 3D modeling anime titties in Blender. However, RT Arcade, as simple of a program as it is, stressed my PC to the point where the fan of my graphics card was louder than my Henry fucking Hoover. In fact, it was so loud it even scared my fish fish. Sorry fish. And so, after a couple minutes of excruciating noise, heat and confusion, I finally decided to close RT Arcade. I then proceeded to block Pepoli on every social media site I could for ever introducing me to a piece of software that literally changed the aspect ratio of my monitor upon closing. It's made my screen resolution go down. <laughs> my res- the resolution of my- it it's down to like 480p, what is this? What have you done? <laughs> what have you done? In fact, the only reason I agreed to do this segment of his video was to tell you all to unsubscribe <laughs> from Papoli for injecting what was most likely a Bitcoin miner into my PC. Thanks for letting me be a part of your video, mate, but I'm on to you. It's Christmas every day. Christmas every day. Ready, clock? Yes, King. <laughs> <laughs> We touched on the origins of Farmcraft earlier on, but what exactly is it, and what relation does it have to Bin Weevils? Actually, quite a lot. Farmcraft is a farming simulating idle game, like many other mobile games where you build structures and plant plants in order to collect money and XP after a certain amount of time in order to level up and expand your world. Farmcraft takes place in the Weevil universe and contains many familiar features, such as the Bin Nests and Bin Bots. Unlike Weevil World, Farmcraft became a popular mobile game due to it being appealing to both existing Bin Weevil players and brand new audiences too. Sadly, 
According to several reviews, it appears that this project was also abandoned shortly into 2021 by 55pixel. As no update or information has been given out since February of that year, and nobody is able to get into any contact with customer support, which sadly alludes to yet another abandoned project, since most sources point to 55pixels mostly disbanding. But if you have any information that proves me wrong, let me know. I'm still eating Christmas cake and warm mince pies in February. Several of the sources I've used so far for this video have been independent blogs surrounding Bin Weevils, which include Mulch Maniac, Bin Weevils Company, Weevly Wonder, Bin Weevils Rant Central, as well as various WordPress pages that have been shut down over the years. Some of these blog pages were used to build a community around the game, as well as discuss new missions and events, whereas others shared their complaints and what they think could be done better in the game. One of these pages showed all of the current mods and admins in the game in order to help players know who to look out for. The typos, Comic Sans, and yellow text on a white background really sends me back to the late 2000s with a huge sense of nostalgia. With the lack of info about the shutdown of Bin Weevils, these blog sites were the primary place people went to ask for answers, alongside Reddit and Twitter. I sent Christmas cards to all my friends in March. In 2014, Bin Weevils had their largest security leak ever, with over a million accounts being given unauthorized access to hackers. This caused the website to close for an entire week for maintenance, and a capture was added as an extra layer of security for players. Despite this added layer, another data leak occurred in the summer of 2017. Weirdly, an unapproved post was published during this breach, announcing the closure of the game, but this was quickly deleted, leaving no sign of it. Every night I hang a stocking up next to my bin. Just one year later, Bin Weevils once again ended up in hot water, which is very weird for an iceberg. The Advertising Standard Authority called 55 Pixels out for their membership advertising being pressuring towards a younger demographic, making them feel like they were missing out by not paying for the subscription, which is against the ASA's guidelines. The company quickly complied and no further action was taken. It's Christmas. The final and least known app we'll be covering today is Bin Weevils Connect, a farm app that allowed Bin Weevils players to message, play games, and customize their characters whilst not at home. Again, trying to tap into this growing mobile market after the huge buzz of Pokemon Go. Once again, this app did not live up to expectations, and due to various reoccurring bugs, the app was removed from the App Store less than six months after its initial launch in 2016. I Ready, clock? Yes, Tink. Oh. Are you okay, Tink? I'm all dressed up to the nines. Yes, I know, I'm looking fine. The Garden Inspector is a weevil responsible for awarding the best gardens from players during themed competitions known as Garden of the Week. However, unlike most other mascots in the game, the Garden Inspector wasn't always a physical character. The two gardening related shops were initially run by Clot and Tab in 2010 with the Garden Plot Shop replacing Clot with the Garden Inspector in 2012. But it wasn't until 2015 where things started to get really interesting. Earlier we mentioned that Bin Weevil's magazine changed publishers in 2014 and therefore couldn't use Mod Glam and Monty as head mascots, at least at first. So Kennedy Publishing used the Nest and Garden Inspectors. Since the previous mascots gave up the Nest and Garden Awards in the magazines, it was the logical alternative. But until this point, the Garden Inspector had never been in-game, and the account for this weaver was made in March of 2015, and later took over the second gardening shop. If it wasn't for these legal issues, could the Garden Inspector have just remained as an unseen garden judge, only physically being seen in 2D in the garden plot shop? If so, she would have been one of the only weevils to not have an account. Living the dream, this is a life for me. And on the topic of not having accounts, in the beta, the characters for Bin Weevils looked very different. Not just in appearance. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> but also in lineup, with several Weevils being reworked, such as Rum, who initially appeared to be a raging alcoholic, as well as multiple being removed after beta stages, including Ring, Shrem, Shrig, Spot, Grot, Hum, Gum, and then more interestingly, Lip, who appears that their personality trait would have been swearing, Big, who was a bodybuilder, Bam, 
who always seem to get beat up, leaving Dong and Fong, who you can probably work out for yourself. Surprisingly though, no sign of a weevil ever could come. Before we get into the scary territory, I thought we'd have a look at some of the more well-known bin weevils, but this time, not their mascots, but their players. These players were well-known for holding leaderboards and minigames and winning King of the Bin. The most reoccurring names I came across were Rooney253, Dangerous, Sassy600, Weeby4, Catgirl2007, Zigzag, Sammy85, Superhero Slop, Spungu 5000 and Gotman 2005. Some of those names are definitely more memorable than others. Also, whilst gathering footage from this game in Bin Weevil's rewritten, I did come across someone called Weeby 4. Is it the same person? Quite possibly. Catch the strides, man! I can't fail to win the Bin Weevil Disco Dance Competition! Whoa, they're the greatest trousers ever, Fling! Let the juice loose! Dragons die with the crossword When the game is on, well, we know how to win It's been rumoured for years that Fire 5 Pixels have been whittling down the staff on Bin Weevils until, according to LinkedIn, four staff remained. So I thought it'd be interesting to see where these ex-staff members had gone. And I was not disappointed! Naturally, most developers move to various other studios, such as Third Kind Games, creators of Blancos, which makes perfect sense. Another employee, however, moved to Fusebox Games, who developed the Love Island games. Talk about a career change. I always went to various software development companies, including a criminal justice app by Lava Interactive, Hollow Me, also known as Beam, who are developing technology so that people can be streamed into your home in a similar way that Snapchat filters work. Whether it's for a seminar, or a fashion catwalk. One of the minds behind Bin Weevils also helped develop Q Doctor, which helps allow virtual GP appointments and getting NHS advice remotely, which has been pretty useful over the past couple of years. The final two that I found most interesting went to Disney World and to the police. The police officer wasn't a developer though. They worked on the community side. I deliberately left things vague about these individuals as not reveal any personal details. It's interesting to see where the ex Bin Weevils team are now, but there's no need to be creepy. Lady Wawa was a bin pet owned by Posh, a pink ball with legs. She was kidnapped by Weevil X, one of the primary antagonists in Bin Weevils, and rose to fame by being rescued by the player with the SWS. The reason I bring up Lady Wawa is because they are rich, famous, and clearly a parody of Lady Gaga. Over on another side of the web, Moshi Monsters released a pet, or Moshling, known as Lady Goo Goo, who was famous for singing and selling out concerts. Lady Gaga sued Moshi Monsters for this character, but nothing ever occurred with Lady Wawa. Now there could be several reasons for this. Whilst Lady Goo Goo had some physical resemblance to Lady Gaga with the blonde hair and the sunglasses, Lady Wawa is a pink circle. Another theory is that Lady Goo Goo released a parody song of Lady Gaga's Pepperapsy and of bad romance. Lady Wawa didn't release a tune, but who knows what the initial plan was. However, I have a separate theory, one that I think will blow this case wide open, because I believe, from the evidence I have gathered, that Lady Gaga chose to sue Moshi Monsters and not Bin Weevils, and I will present this to you now. Lady Gaga once told an interviewer that her favourite food was peach cobbler. If you're not familiar, a cobbler is a fruit filling surrounded by batter or biscuit. What does this look like to you? I see batter with something that could be fruit and cream in the middle. But that's not all. In 2015, Lady Gaga took criticism for wearing a dress made from a bin bag. Bin Weevils was at its peak around this time, and it is all set in a bin. Coincidence? Not after this final piece of evidence. In Lady Gaga's most popular song, Bad Romance, there are some lyrics I'd like to bring your attention to. Bin weevils are dirty, germ-infested creatures, very capable of giving several diseases. So this is why I believe Lady Gaga actually owns Bin Weevils. I mean, it only makes sense. I mean, even the day after Bin Weevils closed, she tweeted, Thank you for all the love you give this country. And I'm humbled and grateful to be fam. And despite it not having a rude meaning, fam is not a listed member of the Gam family. See, she didn't say, 
to be part of the fam or to be your fam, she said to be fam. Lady Gaga is a cut character from Bin Weevils and owns the company, allegedly. And that concludes my TED talk. So that's it. That's the Bin Weevils iceberg. I found it incredibly interesting discovering things about this franchise, and I hope you learned some cool stuff too in this video. If you think I missed anything, let me know, and if there's a bunch of stuff, I'll make a part two. And the same goes with anything I got wrong, as I am just one guy. Let me know what your favourite fact was below, and check out this playlist for all of my nostalgia-based content, including more Bin Weevils, Movie Star Planet, Animal Jam, Pop Tropica, and much, much more. Subscribe to never miss another video, and have a great rest of your day.